Hi everyone, Mike here, obviously. Um, once again, this is going to be a part two response video to John the Other and his discussion about political violence, replacing discourse, and the dangers of it, the perils of that, and um, his urgings that the political right, for lack of a better term, I hate all of that stuff, but um, needs to be careful about le being led into, provoked into violence, into even returning the violence that the political left seems to be enacting now. And by that, I mean, in particular, Antifa and groups like that. And um, I don't think John is a pacifist either. Obviously, I'm pretty sure that he would say, you know, if you're attacked, you defend yourself. Um, but there's a difference between that and being provoked into returning violence and getting frustrated to that point. And I think that's exactly what the political left wants you to do. They want to be able to lead you into that provoke you because they don't really have any standards themselves, again, a la the uh, rules for radicals uh, mantra, um, but they will attack you immediately as soon as you strike back. Then it will be, ah, see, I told you the Nazis were violent, right? Because first they will apply the label to you, then they will attack you because it's justified in that case, just ask Chris Cuomo, no moral equivalence uh, between Nazis and Antifa. Um, and what he's doing there, of course, is he's responding to labels rather than actions. This is what used to, it used to mean to be a country governed by the rule of law and, and innocence till proven guilty and, you know, uh, giving people uh, the right to face their accusers and, and make a case in their defense. The court of public opi opinion in this uh, day and age seems to always be in session. And so we destroy people. We really don't need to get people before a judge anymore to destroy someone's life. We don't, and we don't have to prove anything. We just have to make an accusation against someone. Some of it's being turned around a little bit, but of course, as we all know, ma recently many people's lives have been ruined with mere accusations of sexual impropriety. And sexual assault, rape, or, or something else without having to prove it at all. And that extends now to declarations of racism, sexism, homophobia, um, xenophobia, um, being a Nazi, you know, all of these things. These are labels just placed on someone wantonly in an effort to dismiss them automatically. Now you've removed them from being worthy of public discourse, and then you can blow bullhorns in their face, you can smash their phones, you can physically assault them with a bike lock in a completely um, cowardly manner, skulking back into the crowd. Um, you know, of course, all these people are, I think, are very cowardly. Again, I said in my part one video, if you find yourself chanting these slogans mindlessly, if you find yourself denying other people their right to speech, um, even if you find yourself applying labels to people without really knowing, you're probably going down the wrong path. And um, if you find yourself having to put on a face mask to protest, it tells me that you're probably up to no good. Um, you know, bad deeds are done in the, in, in, in the darkness. And when you put on a face mask, that's what you're doing. You're putting yourself into the darkness. And... Um, you know, and again, these labels being applied, and then we're just abandoning any any requirement on the part of the accuser to actually justify his accusations, to back them up at all, or to give the accused the opportunity to defend themselves. We are literally burning witches here. Um, that That's what's happening. By we, I just mean in general. And um, when the media... Who, you know, again, there's a lot of mindless people out there, unfortunately, or and or there's a lot of ideologues who are easily agreeable to people who are on their side of the political, you know, fence, I guess, political aisle, who uh, will just go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, they'll just nod their heads when someone like Chris Cuomo, you know, the banner under his, uh, under his one uh, little... Um, editorial editorializing at the end of one of his shows said no moral equivalency between Nazis and Antifa. Do you mean Joseph Goebbels and Hitler or who are you talking about here? And how did we come to the conclusion that all of the people being struck by Antifa were bigots and Nazis and that Antifa was completely justifiable in enacting that violence? Um, how does Chris Cuomo know that? 
And that's, again, that's dangerous because it, it gives a, I think, an air of a legitimacy to this idea that you can just place a label on somebody that you disagree with politically. And this is quite obvious because we've seen, for instance, the recent um, tour through um, Australia and New Zealand by Stefan Molyneux and Lauren Southern and the way they were treated by the media and some of the questions that were asked. I, at one point in one of the interviews where they were talking to someone, uh, this guy was a news, fairly popular news guy there, I guess, um, Stefan Molyneux just said, do you have any questions that aren't race baiting? Um, which I thought was a good response. But if you listen to the way they're, they're, um, they're talked to by this unbiased media, which they're not, of course, um, I'm not even sure that they make the claim anymore. I'm, I mean, I think if you challenged them, if you challenged Chris Cuomo, he would lay claim to being unbiased, but clearly he's not. And there's a lot of uh, media personalities nowadays who don't even lay claim to being unbiased. And I think it's because they've declared themselves to be on the right side of the issue. And so they don't need to be unbiased anymore because at some point you have to stand against evil, right? But they have sole discretion on what constitutes evil and they don't want to debate it. It's not up for debate, right? Because they've declared it so. And the political left has done that. They've declared it so. And um, I don't really feel that I'm on the political right or the political left. I have a lot of conservative views, but I also have a lot of classical liberal ideals. And I think the political left has moved f quite a bit left. <clears throat> anyway, so you see a lot of people who used to be considered left wing, maybe even quite left, now feel like they've been abandoned by their own party. You know, there's the Dave Rubens out there, but I'm thinking uh, in particular of some people like uh, Alan Dershowitz, who is so far left, he wrote a book entitled uh, The Case Against Impeaching Trump, right? Because uh, he's, a, he's a principled man. And so he, he even though he's a, a liberal at heart, when he sees practices that he feels are illiberal, he doesn't support them just because those people go by that moniker. He says, no, no, what's right is right. And I have a lot of respect for that. If, actually, the more I see of Alan Dershowitz, the more respect I gain for the man because he's principled and he stands on his principles. And if you're going to get him to change his mind, you're going to have to show him how his principles are in error. But he's not, an, he's not dogmatic. He's not an ideologue. He's not just going to stick with that, that uh, political party or movement simply because they wear the badge, right? And uh, so I would view myself as nonpartisan, certainly. And I think the reasonable people tend to be of that bent. Uh, even people on the, on the right, maybe not the far right, extreme right, which I think is a very low population. I think that's what the political left has done, is they've made the boogeymans out, right? No no, uh, what is it? No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. What KKK? The thousand or 1500 members that exist, or maybe it's 15,000 even in a country of over 300 million, right? But they are the ones who are popularizing this notion of the KKK because it gives them, they believe, political, the political um, authorization to enact force because what do you do? What if you could do? What What would you do if you could go back in the early days of Nazism? What would you do if you could actually stop the fash? Right. Well, you would do that, and you would, by all means, necessary. That's clearly not what's happening nowadays. So they've got to find a way to give themselves the license to enact that violence that they so desperately desire, or at least say they do. Some do. Uh, some, I think, are acting out a mental illness or something because I don't think everyday reasonable people commit these kind of acts against people that they don't really know. And also, they're, they're, they seem to be somewhat divorced from, other than skulking back into the crowd, the idea that they could get fucked up themselves. I mean, this is, you know, I, I mentioned in my part one video that I've never been in a fight that I picked myself, right? I've defended myself, but I've never picked a fight with anybody. I'm keenly aware of the fact that one, one precise blow from another person can kill a man. 
um, or screw you up for a long time. You know, just ask um, Mark Wahlberg, right? I think he he screwed somebody up, um, blinded them or something with a punch. Um, I might be wrong about that, but I mean, obviously, you know what I'm talking about, right? So if I walk into a bar and somebody wants to mess around with me, my first order of business is to not get into the fight, right? Whatever I got to do to de-escalate that, I'm doing. Because even if I think I can take the guy, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if someone breaks a bottle and then it's stuck in your eye. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. And I think intelligent people who, who have a you know, fairly healthy self-preservation mode, who, who don't have some pent-up anger or mental issue or something like that, stay away from that kind of stuff. I certainly wouldn't involve myself in that unnecessarily. But uh, I do agree with John the other. I, I do think it's dangerous to allow ourselves, I say ourselves, I'm too busy working to get involved anyway, um, to be drawn into responding to political violence with political violence, except in the extremity of self-defense. Uh, because I think that's what they want. And, I, and John made a follow-up video where he said giving, I don't know, social justice warriors or something like that what they want. That is what they want, because then they get to turn it on you and say, see, the bigots are violent. See, Nazis are violent. See, we told you. And that further authorizes them to use the, the force. And they're hoping, probably, will um, get, garner them some extra political will from the silent majority. I don't think that's true. But um, I think you have to stand on your moral principles. I think you have to take the high ground. I think you have to do, actually do what Michelle Obama said, and that is to, when they go low, you go high. Keep demanding the discourse, even if it means you get maligned like Ben Shapiro did by a, uh, um, a Cortez woman, um, you know, when he said, you know, I'd love to debate her, I would donate, you know, money to her campaign or charity if she'd do that. And she turned it into, you know, oh, it's another entitled man thinking he's entitled to my time. Well, he's not, you know, it's just like catcalling. Okay, but Ben clarified his position. And I think reasonable people recognize that for what it is. This is someone using her privilege of being able to declare herself as a damsel in distress and have people respond to that um, to divert from an obvious beatdown, I think, that she would have been, an intellectual beatdown, please, uh, by someone like Ben Shapiro, who I think is her intellectual superior. Um, maybe he's not smarter than her, but I think he knows more um, about the issues that... Uh, you know, hence his eagerness, right, to debate her on the issues, in particular of socialism and that sort of thing. Um, but I think you just tell, still have to keep demanding the debate, and you have to keep towing the line. It's like, you know, I liken this actually to some, inst uh, some instances that I had in my life, maybe 15, 20 years ago. And uh, I was in some very difficult times, and my wife bless her heart, at the time, gave me the best advice that I've ever had. And the advice was, Mike, just keep doing the right thing. Just keep doing the right thing over and over and over. And eventually you'll win. Eventually it will be seen that you did the right thing and it will be known um, and you will be held in high regard because of that. And so I did that. I just kept doing what I knew was right over and over and over again, and it did work. And um, the person that I'm referring to with regards to all of this, and I, I think, have a great relationship now. And I think a lot of it's because I persevered with doing the right thing, just repeatedly. So sharpen your ideas, engage in debate, demand debate, demand nonviolence, point out the violence for certain. I mean, I think that's one thing that we all have to keep doing is pointing out the violence when it's enacted by these far-left political groups. Um, just keep pointing out who's being the real fascist. Just keep pointing out who is enacting that violence and who really is unwilling to, um, to defend their position. Thanks, everyone, very much for watching. Have a lovely, lovely day. Thanks, John.